Um, hi guys, this is uh, just something I wanted to go over. Welcome to um, Exploring Watercolor. I had a question regarding, um, well, the supplies, the supply, the supply list I'm mailing out as soon as I finish this, but um, I wanted to go over really quick about the um, supply list and the surface, the most important, well, one of the most important besides your paint, your paper, your brush, thank you, your paper, brush, paint, is your surface, okay? So I wanted to go over really quick the kind of surfaces that you can use for this class. <clears throat> the first one is a masonite board. Um, you can get a masonite board like this if you're going to work smaller. Um, I don't really want anybody working smaller than a finished size of 16 by 20. But mind you, you're going to have to have a border around that. So just keep that in mind, okay? Um, recommended size for the class that I want you guys to use is either an 18 by 24 inch finished painting size or 16 by 20 finished painting size. Um, but Remember, you're going to need at least, at least a solid inch around all sides. I prefer to, to give your guys a little more room, but um, you're going to need a border around that because you're either going to staple your paper to the surface or you're going to use watercolor tape and you're going to tape it to the surface. So, um... There's really only two options for stapling, and I'll show you that. This is a watercolor board. I got it. I, I think I got it at, um, I want to say, either Hobby Lobby or Blix. I don't think I got it at Michael's. I don't think Michael's carries these unless they started carrying them. But I know in the past that Hobby Lobby has carried these. This is a masonite board. Please um, be aware that if you use any kind of absorbent surface, you're going to have to seal it and let it dry really good before you start painting. Um, you're going to have to seal it. A waterproof sealer, clear like polyurethane, okay? And especially important with masonite. Masonite is not archival. It's not made for fine art. It will leach. I'm, I'm, my braces are causing me to lisp a little bit. It will leach and it will also stain your paper. So please, if you choose to use either a solid board of masonite, which is great and cheap, um, I see another example right there. Hang on, I'm going to get it. Um, oh, nope, it was the wrong thing. Okay, never mind. Um, if you get a regular piece of masonite, smooth on both sides at Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, make sure it's, you know, thick enough so it won't be bending. You want it sturdy, I'd say. If you could get a quarter inch, that'd be great. Um, you can either use a polyurethane or you can use um, a latex gloss paint to, to seal it, okay? White, okay? Um, but I have just only used, um, I've used white and I've also used white paint and I've also used the polyurethane waterproof. Uh, you might want to get like a, a weather resistant one. The next um, thing that you can use for a painting surface would be um, um, this thing right here. Oh, it's on my board, so I'm going to have to show you right here. I'm going to move this, and I'm going to bring it here, and I'm going to switch the camera around. So we're going to switch this around. I guess I can't do it when I record. Okay, so I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to switch it around this way. This is a, a drawing board that I got at Michael's. It's an artist loft drawing board. And it is adjustable up and down. It is 30 inches 
across and about 19 and a half, 19 and a half maybe this way, 19 or 20 this way. This is really good to get. It's hinged right here. And it also has the notches down there so you can you can notch it make it as high as you want to and it's and flat um you're gonna have to seal this if you get this at michael's you're gonna have to seal it but this comes in handy this is really a nice thing to have for your studio with whether you're drawing whether you're using acrylic pastel um the highest i can get it up to is I can get it that tall, that high, and it stands right up there on the board, okay? So with watercolor though, you're pretty much gonna be either flat or at a slight angle. You're never gonna really be up straight like this. You can do this when you're doing acrylic or pastel or drawing or whatever, but not so much watercolor unless you wanna drip, then you can, paint like that and then do your washes like this which is a great idea for washes which I'll show you how to do in the class but um this is a great um thing to have around it's not exactly perfectly portable but it is I mean you can just tie a tie a rope around it or tape it up a little bit and then just carry it around if you want um so that is that one, and I did get that at Michael's, and I have a couple of them because um, I do um, a lot of paintings all at once. Um, you can use watercolor tape with this. You can stretch your watercolor on straight onto here if you seal it, okay? So this is the thing. You're going to have to seal this one too, okay? But this is great to have for all kinds of things. Um, and you can stretch your watercolor paper using the watercolor tape on this. The next thing I have to show you is taped foam core board. This is pretty much inexpensive, an inexpensive alternative. This is two sheets of quarter inch foam core. And I just got um, white duct tape and I taped it all the way around. Um, actually, I sealed it first, sealed it first, because this stuff, regular foam core is not waterproof, okay? So, um, if you want to use this alternative, which is really lightweight, um, it doesn't last very long because it's not as durable as other products, but this is a great thing to start off with if you don't, you know, if you're watching your money and wisely you should um this is a good idea but if you do use this then seal it on both sides with either you know a polyurethane waterproof sealant or like a white glossy paint acrylic paint to seal the whole thing and then tape it all the way around and the only reason i say to use white is that it doesn't distract but then that's not really important if you want to use regular duct tape you can doesn't matter i just i'm anal so that's i just use white like that but that's a nice lower cost alternative i knew those guys were gonna bark remy don't bark so then another alternative here is plywood okay now this the next two are probably my all-time favorites with plywood, this big piece of plywood, this will fit a whole sheet of watercolor on here. See this? That's a whole sheet of watercolor paper. It's 22 by inch, 22 by 30 inches. I had another board that was bigger that I absolutely loved. Um, but uh, it disappeared in my move. I can't find it. But anyway, um, this is great if you want to use stapling for stretching your watercolor, which I will go over as well. This one, if you're doing a smaller size watercolor painting, 
you can use this um, for the smaller size and you can use it for watercolor tape, the paper tape. I drilled two holes at the top here. Um, I actually used this in college hundreds of years ago, <laughs> hundreds of years ago, but I drilled two holes and then I put like a vinyl um, braided string, like I braided it and then put it through here. So I use it as a handle. You could do a little bit of bigger holes if you want, um, but then if you get too big, then you're gonna lose your surface here. But um, this is great. And the other great thing is too, um, you can use both sides for taping and stapling. And this will last you years. Like I said, I've had this for a hundred years already. So yes, so this is good. Um, actually, um, my goal is to have a nice large piece of this beautiful plywood, drawing board plywood, and then have like a handle big enough so that you could actually have a part for your whole hand to fit through and hold it. My absolute favorite, favorite, favorite painting surface is gator board. And I have two of these. I have this thin one here. And gator board is, um, it is a trademark name. It's hard. Oops. Sorry. Hey boy. It's okay. It was just me. are going to be in their own room when we have class just so you know okay so back to gator board this comes in two widths i believe only two i have both widths and i have this pretty pretty large i have this bigger than a full sheet of watercolor paper and this is waterproof as it is you can use this for stretching with the um with the watercolor tape and you don't have to worry about the board um, dissolving or disintegrating um it handles the watercolor tape the paper tape and as you can see i've used this quite a bit i use it you know for using my mixed media i use it for acrylics i use it for watercolor and you know, you get both sides. And this one, you do not have to seal it at all. It's just totally waterproof as it is. I have one of these that's thicker and it actually has two paintings on it right now. It has one on the front and then another one on the back, which when I'm not using the other one, it's um, covered with a sheet of plastic and taped down that way. I can have two paintings going at once. So, so anyway, the gator board is probably my favorite because of the fact that it's so lightweight. It's really portable. Um, even the thicker one, it's super lightweight. I mean, it's a little heavier than this. You can get, like if you order one from Dick Blick, you can get a full sheet, which is huge. And you can have several size um, drawing boards, painting boards made, which I did. I had the, the biggest sheet, I had one cut, I, I think almost in half, maybe not quite. And then I got, you know, ma made it so that I could use it for a smaller painting, like a 16 by 20, 18 by 24, and then even smaller, so I could do like 11 by 14, nine by 12. Um, so I got out of that, you know, of course I've been doing this for a while. So, um, that one big sheet gave me several different paint, um, painting, drawing surfaces to work with. You can draw on this stuff. Um, <clears throat> you can staple into it, which I don't like doing because after a while, if you keep stapling onto it you know it's going to degrade the surface and then uh, i don't really want the water soaking into the stapling holes 
but um, I love Gator Board. This stuff is amazing. So my two favorites right now, you know, that I've been using for a long, long time is the Gator Board and the Plywood. Um, if you can find a really good size drawing board, oh, also, you don't want any knots in it because you just want a nice, like a nice piece of pine. If you can find a pine or birch, maybe something a little harder than pine, but you still want to get, I would say pine or maybe birch because birch is a little harder and that way you don't have to worry about, um, putting dents in it because I know pine is soft. So anyway, okay, so those are the painting surfaces I recommend. And there's one more thing I wanted to show you that you can use if you don't have a drawing board like this, um, but you wanna be able to lift your board up. I'm not saying you need this for the class because you don't. Um, but I'm saying if you would like to keep painting and have this option, I'm going to show you this. This one, this is not, this thing here is not a um, drawing surface, but it is a tabletop easel. And I'm just going to show you. Uh, oh, I really, I really, when I, when I close these bad boys up, boy, I really, really, really tighten those screws down really good. This thing is a, it's called a tabletop easel. I think I got this from Cheap Joe's. Cheap Joe's art stuff. I can't get it open. But anyway, what it does is this top part. Oh, I know what. Look. Okay. I can't get this one undone. I did it so tight. Okay, but what it does is this, as you can see it right here, this lifts up right here. And jolly, right there. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> I screwed it down too tight. <laughs> but this lifts up like that. And then this thing here comes out like that. It extends out and you can literally sit at your table and it's got a little drawer in it which is right here so you can pull this little drawer out and you can keep your supplies in here when i used to go on the um motor coach in my previous life um i used this a lot because it's small and i could get a pretty good size drawing board on top of it you know and i could work up or flat or however and came in really handy and of course like everything else you want it to be portable as much as possible and this thing is it's got a little handle like that so this is by cheap joe's it's it's uh joe miller's um table evil which i think it was $50 maybe, $30, but you don't need this for class. I was just showing you. So anyway, um, those are the watercolor surfaces that I recommend to use. You don't need an easel at all. You just need a flat table to work on. Um, it doesn't have to be a big table, but you want to have it big enough so that you can have your water bucket next to you, your palette, your mixing palette, and then your palette of paints, however that is. If you wanna work on a, if you have a long rectangular table, I actually like to work this way. Um, my configuration is different right now, but I always have my, oh, oh brilliant. I stuck my magazine in paint. Um, oh, life of an artist. Um, so I always like to have, if you're left-handed, you would want your stuff to the left of you because you don't want to reach over your paper all the time. And if you're right-handed, you want your stuff to the right of you. So I have, I'm right-handed, so everything is on my right. And then my painting area that I work on is right here, okay? You're gonna wanna have a good light, okay, for class. 
You don't need an expensive studio light. Um, they sell really cheap lights or even a good, um, if you have a desk lamp, you can use that, but I would recommend one of those um, LED uh, light bulbs. Don't use incandescent. Use a true natural light light bulb always when you're doing any kind of artwork. Um, this one has two different kinds of bulbs in it, which is nice. Uh, what else? Um, but anyway, I'm going to send this off to you guys, and then I'm going to give you the list. Don't freak out at the list. It looks daunting when it when you look at the paints don't freak out about that i recommend a um i recommend that you guys if you don't if you're not already painting and you don't have watercolor paints already use a good brand i don't want anybody buying artist loft or anything like that because it's the pigment load in those paints are not high enough they're not good and they're not probably light fast so if you want to watch you know um your your pennies i don't want you guys spending a fortune on class um i just realized i ruined my ring um uh, if you want to make okay so just get yourself a good student grade um Joe Miller, Cheap Joe's Art Supply, has really, really good watercolor paints. If you want to use American Journey, those are really good, and they're not as expensive as some of the other lines. I actually like American Journey paints. I have a few of his colors. Um, you can use Winsor Newton Cotman line if you want to use student grade. Those are still good paints. The pigment load is not professional but they're still, um, they're still good quality. And then um, Grumbacher has an academy line, which is a student grade line, or you can buy the Grumbacher. Um, then there's a, the Golden Artist Colors creates a new, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it's not new, new, but their watercolors is called Core, Q-O-R, which are excellent paints. <clears throat> I haven't really compared the prices yet to Winsor Newton or Holbein or anything, but if you can get, um, if you're just starting out and you want to save, you know, save your money, either get a few colors of high quality artist paints or get, um, now these are not cheap. They're not, these aren't student grade. These are professional, but uh, this is just an option of another brand to get. Um, if you want to use uh, a fewer colors of high quality paints, that's the way I would go. Just make sure that you're going to get a warm yellow, a cool yellow, a warm red, a cool red. Um, and as far as the blues, um, if you have any questions, there's a few I definitely want you to have. You don't have to have all of them, but there's a couple I want you to have. Don't buy any black paint. Don't buy any gray paint. I don't use those at all in my palette. We mix grays and we mix blacks. Don't buy any brown paint. You don't need brown. If you buy a set and it comes with raw sienna or burnt umber or whatever, that's fine. Just don't purposely buy black. Don't purposely buy any grays. I don't use them. You get much more beautiful blacks and browns and grays when you mix your own. And so um, if there's an area that you want to mix a black or a gray for color, you'll ask me in class and I will show you how it's done. There's a still life that I really want to use and it does have some black in it so that if we use that one we're definitely going over um, how to mix blacks in that class but I'll, I'll show you anyway so don't buy any black don't buy any brown paint don't buy any gray paint okay purple paint if you're gonna buy purple there's only one and that's 
one that I would want you to buy if you do buy purple, and that's Dioxazine Violet. If you don't want to buy purple, you don't have to, um, because you can mix your own. You can mix your own oranges. You can mix your own greens. Um, and what else? So anyway. All right, guys. So I just wanted you to have this information. Please, please uh, email me or text me with any questions. In case you don't have my phone number, it's 248 842 8656. Um, initially, I'd rather have you text me than if we need to talk, we talk. Sometimes when the phone rings and I'm busy, if I don't know who it is, I don't answer it. So, um, but if you need me to call you, then by all means, text me and say, hey, it's, it's me. I really need to talk to you personally about this. I got some questions. By all means, please do. Um, if I don't answer, leave me a message and I will get back to you. Like I said, unrecognized phone numbers, if I don't know who it is, I, I don't answer. So watercolor paper, there's a couple brands that you can use. Um, the most used that I have used in the past is Arches, Arches Cold Press. For the class, I would want you to use Cold Press. You can use hot press, but if you've never painted on it before, please don't because there's it's a whole different ball of wax and um, I would rather you guys stick with cold pressed watercolor paper. 100% cotton rag, Arches cold press, 140 pound, okay? You're welcome to use 300 pound. You don't have to stretch it, which is a great thing. So if you want to spend the extra money and use that, by all means, you can buy 300 pound paper. It's more expensive, but um, you don't have to stretch it. You can just lay it flat and you're all set. So, okay guys, um, I think that's it. So if you guys have any questions, please, please, please give me a shout out, email me, text me, okay? I'm excited to have you in class. It's gonna be fun. I, um, I've got some amazing, amazing still lifes. Oh my gosh, I, I'm really torn because there's so many great ones. So I'll be sending that out tomorrow, okay? So you guys can get started, um, get an idea of what you're gonna draw. Or um, if you're not really sure about your drawing skills, text me and I will let you know a few little tricks you can use, okay? All right, I'm excited to see you guys. I'm so excited. Exploring watercolor is gonna be lots of fun. You guys, I'm gonna make sure you have fun, okay? So have a good rest of your day. Enjoy your dinner and um, have a good evening and I'll see you soon, okay? See ya next Tuesday.